I behave technically. Without sufficient restraint just now. But you are not like other people. You are pure. You are noble. And you alone can understand me. I love you. You must go! Good night! I can't live without you! For my joy, your happiness! Those marvelous exquisite eyes! Like I have never seen in any other woman. Don't be silly! For the first time, for the first time I am speaking of love to you. And I feel, I feel I was not on earth than any other planet. Well, well it doesn't matter. There is no forcing kindness of course. But there must be no successful rivals. We know successful rivals. I swear to God. Oh, you said me. I will kill any rival. I'll kill any rival. Excuse me, Vasile. I didn't know you were here. I'm even dressing up. I don't care. I don't care. Goodbye. I don't care! I don't care! You're tired, poor little darling. You ought to go to bed earlier. Uh, is Bobby asleep? Oh, yeah, he's asleep and not sleeping quietly. Darling, I keep meaning to speak to you, but either you are not here or else I haven't the time. Uh, Bobby, because Bobby's nursery is cold and damp, and your room is so nice for a baby. Uh, you might move to Olga's room for the time being. Where? Uh, you will be in Olga's room and Bobby in your room. Oh, he's such a darling. Today I said to him, Bobby, you're mine, you're mine. And he looked at me in quite a special way. Procha <coughs> Popov. Procha Popov is here and he asked me to go out with him in his play. How, how strange men are. Uh, tell him I'll be right there. Oh, now that must be Olga. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. They said that they'll have an evening party. Oh, strange. When I left half an hour ago, they were expecting the carnival people. They all have gone. Has Masha gone too? Where has she gone? And why is that photo of sitting outside? Don't ask questions. I'm tired. Wasn't she a bad little girl? Well, the meeting <coughs> just got over. I'm tired out. My head aches. It really aches. Andre has lost 200 rubles at the cards. The whole town is talking about it. Yes, yes. I'm tired too. Oh, my wife took it into her head to give me a fright. She almost poisoned herself. Oh, but now it's fine. I'm glad. So are we to go away? Well, then I'll say good night. Fyodor, please come along. I cannot stay at home alone. I'm not going with you. I'm tired. Has my wife gone home? I expect so! Well then, goodbye. Oh, well, then I must go alone. Oh, my head. My head really aches. Andre has lost 200 rubles at the cards. The whole town is talking about it. I just go and lie down. But tomorrow I'm free. How nice that is. Tomorrow I'm free and the day after I'm free. Ah, oh, my head. My head aches. It really aches. They all have gone. Oh, I'll be back in half an hour. I'll go only a little way. I'm left alone. To go to Moscow. Moscow. Moscow! <laughs> 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 Sitting below under the 
upstairs. I said to them, come upstairs. You must not stay there. They only cried. They only cried. We don't know where the father is. They said, what if he is burned? What an idea. And the poor souls in the yard. They all under us too. Oh, take this, Nanny. Uh, take this. What a dreadful night. Yeah. The whole Kirsano street has been burned to the ground, it seems. Uh, take this. The Vashinins, they had a fright. The house was almost nearly burnt. And poor Fidotic, he has got everything gone. There's nothing left. Uh, uh, Holly, dear, you better call Therapon. I can't carry it all. Come on! No one will answer the bell. How awful it is! I'm just sick of it! Oh, here he comes. Parapo, the colotiline girls are downstairs. Give this oh. to them. Just give it. Wait. Take these two. Yeah, please take them. Nani, darling, just give everything to them. We cannot keep anything. The washerwomen, they had a fright. We just cannot let them go home. The little girls, we can put them in the drawing room. And Alexander, he can go at the parents. Fedotic can be at the parents too. And as ill luck will have it, doctor, he's drunk, he's frightfully drunk, and no one can be put with him. Uh, Vashilin's wife, she can be in the drawing room too. Oh, dear, dear. Don't send me away. Don't send me away. Nonsense, Nanny. No one is sending you away. I own. I treasure. I work, I do my best. I'm getting weak. Everyone will say, send her away. Send her away. And where am I to go? Where? Oh, rest yourself, oh, Nani. Please sit. Please sit. See how tired you are. How pale. Just rest. Oh, um, they are saying we must form a committee for the assistance of those whose houses have been burnt. Well, that's a good idea. Indeed, we ought always to be ready to help the poor. It's the duty of the rich. The house is full wherever you go. It's influenza in the town. I'm afraid the children may get it. <coughs> There's no room in this fire. Mm, it's quiet. Say, they say my hair must be untidy. I've grown fed up, but that's not true. Not a bit. Oh, she's asleep. Poor dear. How dare you sit in my presence? Get up. Get up! Just get up! Get out of the room! Get out of the room! Why you keep that old woman? I don't understand. I don't understand either. She's no use here. She's a peasant and she ought to be in the country. You spoil people. I like order in the house. There ought to be no useless servant in the house. You are tired, poor darling. Our headmistress is tired. You know when baby Sophie's a big girl and goes to school, I shall be afraid of you. I won't be headmistress. Oh, you'll be elected, Olya. That's a settled thing. I refuse. I can't. It's too much for me. And the way you were just talking to Nani right now, that was so rude. It makes me feel faint. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You must understand, my dear. It might be that we are strangely brought up. We cannot talk to her like that. Oh. It just makes me feel ill. Oh, please forgive me. Please. See, a slightest rudeness, a tactless word, it just upsets me. I know I often say too much, that's true, but you must tell me, dear, that she might just as well be in the country. She has been with us for 30 years, but she can't walk now. Either I don't understand you or you won't understand me. She does nothing but sit still or sleep. Let her sit still then. Sit still? Huh? She's a servant. I don't understand you all here. We have a nanny to look after the children, a wet nurse for our baby, a housemaid and a cook. Why do we need that old woman for? What's the use of her? This night, it has made me ten years older. We must come to an understanding, darling. You are at high school, I am at home. You are a teacher while I look after the house. So if I say anything about the servant, I know what I am talking about. I do know what I am talking about. And that old head, that old thief, that old witch shall be cleared out of the house tomorrow. I won't have people annoy me. I won't have it. Really? If you won't move downstairs, we'll always be quarreling. And that's 
awful. Where is Marsha? It's time to go home. The fire is dying out. They say that only one part of town has been burned. You're so good, Olga. Sometimes I wonder, had it not been for Marsha, I should have married you. I'm tired. What is it? The doctor is helpless to drunk. Oh, he's coming this way. I must hide. What a ruffian that doctor is. Oh, he's not drunk in two years and now he's gone and done it. The devil take them all. The devil take them all. Damn them all. They think I'm a doctor? That I can treat all sorts of complaints? But really, I don't know anything. I've forgotten which I did know. Now I don't remember anything. Everything! They'll take them. They'll take them! Last Wednesday, I treated a woman at this. She died. And it was my fault she died. Yes, I did know something 25 years ago. But now, I know nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Perhaps I'm not a man at all. Just pretend to have arms, legs, and head. Perhaps I don't exist. Just imagine to walk around, eat, and sleep. <laughs> Only if I didn't exist. I don't care. I don't care a scrap. Who the hell knows? Day before yesterday, there was a conversation at the club. They were talking about Shakespeare, Voltaire. I've read nothing, nothing at all. But I looked as though I have read them. And everyone did the same as I did. The vulgarity, the meanness at that woman I killed on Wednesday. It all came to my mind. It all came to my mind. <laughs> and everything seemed nasty, disgusting, and all woman in my soul. <laughs> and I went ah, and got drunk. <laughs> oh. Let's sit here, no one can come. Oh, if it hadn't been for the soldiers, the whole town would have been burned down. Splendid fellows, they are first rate men. Splendid fellows. What time is it? Oh, it's past three. And it's getting light already. They all are sitting in the dining room and no one seems to think of going. And that Solonia of yours, he's sitting there too. You had better go to bed, doctor. Oh, it's all right. Thank you. You have been hitting the pot, Ivan. Bravo, bravo! In we know, veritas, as the ancients say. I uh, got dirty all over at the fire. I'm a sight. <laughs> oh, I had a word drop yesterday about our brigade being transferred ever so far away. Some say to Poland, others say to Chita. Yeah, I've heard about it too. The whole town will be a wilderness then. Oh. The smithereens. Break such an invaluable object, Ivan. Not that man is super bad conduct. Perhaps. Well, it was hers, it was. Perhaps I didn't smash it. But as it looked as though I had. Perhaps we don't exist. <laughs> but we are not there at all. I don't know anything. Nobody knows anything. What are you staring at? Natasha is having a little affair going on with Protopo. 
Have you seen nothing? Sit here and see nothing. Well, but that is our choice having a little affair going on with the protopo. Ha! May I offer you this thing? May I offer you this thing? Yeah. How strange it all is, <laughs> really. When the fire began, I ran home as fast as I could. I went and saw that our house was safe and sound and out of danger, but my little girls were out there in the doorway in their nightgowns. Their mother was nowhere to be seen. The people were bustling about, horses and dogs were running about, and my children's faces were full of horror and alarm. My God, what more these children have to go through in the long years to come. And when I came to your house, I saw their mother <coughs> screaming, angry. <coughs> and while my little girls were standing in the doorway in the night comes, and the street was red with fire, and there was a fearful noise, I thought something like this used to happen years ago when the enemy would suddenly make a raid and start burning and plundering. And in reality, what a difference there is between what is now and what is, has been there in the past. And in another 200 years, people will look at our present manner of life with horror and derision. And everything of today will seem awkward, heavy, uncomfortable. <coughs> ah, I'm in such a strange state of mind today. I have a fiendish longing for life. Young and old are bound by love, and precious are its pangs. Drum, drum, drum. Drum, drum. Burn to ashes. Burn to ashes. Everything I had in the world. <laughs> I found something to joke about. Is everything burnt? Everything I had in the world. My guitar is burnt. My camera. And the notebook which I meant to give it to you, that's burned too. <laughs> you are celebrating that name. No, hey. sir, Yoni, you can't stay here. How is it that bank can be here and I can't? Oh, we must go, really. How's the fire? Uh, 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 they say it's dying down. Uh, but I don't understand. That how this pan can be here and I can't. Pam time time. Tra -ta -ta -ta. Come on, let's go. Very well. We'll make note of this. I might explain my meaning further. But I fear. I fear that I may provoke the geese. Chuck. 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 <laughs> How that horrified! So Lenny has made room, made the room smell of tobacco. The Baron is asleep. Baron, Baron! Oh, 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 God! I'm so tired. The big yard. Oh, no! I'm not talking in my sleep. I really am going to the brickyard from here. It's nearly settled, Irina. You look so pale, lovely and fascinating. It seems as though your paleness is shedding light through this dark air. Oh dear. You're melancholy, you're dissatisfied with life. Come with me, we'll go together, we'll work. Nikolai, go away. Oh, you're here. I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, darling. You know, I look at you and I remember how on your name day you were talking about the joy of work. You were so confident and cheerful that day, Rina. And what a life I was dreaming of then. What has become of it? There are tears in your eyes, Rina. Don't cry, please. Go to bed and take some rest. If only I could, 
give my life for you. Nikolai, do go! Really, this is too much! I'm going. Are you asleep, Rajar? Huh? You better go home. Masha! Masha, my lovely wife! My only one! How are you? She's tired out, let her rest in there. Yeah, I'll just leave. Masha, you're so wonderful. I'm so happy with you. You know, you have been my wife for seven years and it only seems just to be that we got married. All your bright, all your bright you are, Masha. With you, I'm always content. I'm content and I'm always content. And I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. And there's something that I can't get out of my head. It's simply revolting and it sticks in my head like a nail. I must speak of it. I mean about Andre. He has mortgaged his house to the bank and his wife has grabbed all the money. And you know, the house doesn't belong to him alone. It belongs to all four of us and he ought to know that if he's a decent man. But what's got into you, Masha? Andre has been dead all around the town. It's revolting anyways. But we are not poor. I teach in the high school. I take private lessons. I do my duty. There's no nonsense about me. I want nothing but it's injustice that revolts me. Masha. Go off your door. Masha, you're tired. Take some rest. I'll come back in half an hour to pick you up. I'm content. I'm content. I'm content. How steady our Andre has grown. How dull beside that woman. He is a member and Pratap Pope is the chairman. The whole town is laughing and talking of it and he's the only one who sees it as nothing. And here, when everyone has been running to the fire, why he still sits in his room and takes no notice? He does nothing but play his violin. Oh, it's awful. Awful, awful. I can't bear it. Throw me out. Please throw me out. I can't bear it anymore. What is it? What is it, darling? Bear. Bear. Bear has it all gone. Oh my God. I've forgotten everything. Everything is in a tangle in my mind. I don't even remember the Italian for window ceiling. Oh my God. I've forgotten everything. <laughs> Every day I forget something new. And life is slipping away. And we'll never come back. We'll never go to Moscow. I can see that. We won't. Darling. We won't. Oh, darling. I'm crying. Oh, I'm miserable. I'm not going to work. I can't. I've had enough of it. Enough of it. I've been in a telegraph class and now I have a job in the town council and I hate and despise every bit of work they give me. I'm already 23. I've been working for years. My brains are drying up. I'm getting thin, old and ugly. And there's nothing, nothing, not the slightest satisfaction. I don't know how is it I'm alive and I haven't killed myself yet. Don't cry, my child, don't cry. It makes me feel miserable. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. That's so... See, from there, I'm not crying. I won't. I won't. I'm talking to you as a friend, as a sister. If you care for my advice, marry the Baron. You know you respect him. You think highly of him. I understand he's not very good looking, but he's a thoroughly nice man. So good. A person doesn't marry for love, but to do her duty. If I would have been in your place, I would marry anyone. Whosoever will be proposed to me without love. I would even marry an old man. I kept expecting we should move to Moscow and there I should meet my true love. I've been loving him, dreaming. But now, it seems, that was all nonsense. Nonsense. Oh, my sweet, lovely sister, I understand it all. When Baron left the army and came to us in a plain coat, I thought he looked so ugly. He positively made me cry. He asked me, why are you crying? God, how could I tell him? But if God has brought you together, I should be happy. That's a very different thing, you know. Quite different.
she walks about as though it was she who set the fire to the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Masha, you're silly. The very silliest <laughs> of the family. That's you. Well, I want to confess my sins, dear sisters. My soul is yearning. I'm going to confess to you, and never again to anyone. It's my secret, but you must know everything about it. I'll tell you this minute. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I love that man. I'll tell you straight out. I don't watch your name. Oh, stop it! I'm not listening. But what am I to do with it? At first, I thought him strange. Then I was sorry for him, and then I came to love him. To love him with his words, his misfortunes, his two little girls. I love him. Stop it, would you? I'm not listening. Whatever silly things you say, I won't hear them. Oh, yeah, you're silly. I love him. I love him. So that's my fate. It means that's my lot. And he loves me too, Irina. He loves me too. It's so terrifying. Yes. Is it wrong? Well, my darling sister, I've confessed it to you, and now I hold my tongue. I'll be like Gogol's madman. Silence, silence. Oh, what is it? I can't make it out. I have told you ten times, Sergey Ivanovich. Oh, I'm not on this arrangement for you in the first place. You must call me Your Honor. Your Honor, I have told you ten times. Oh, it's all right. Tell them all right. I'm sick of them. Where's Olga? Olga? Yes. Oh, I've come to ask you ask you for the key of the cupboard. Uh, it's a small one. I've lost mine. Do you have yours? <coughs> what a tremendous fire it was. It's begun to die down now. Oh damn it! That Parapan made me so cross. I said something silly to him. Your Honor. Why don't you speak, Olya? It's time to drop this foolishness and sulking all around. You're here, Master. You as well, Irina. Well, let us have it straight out. Then, what is it that you have against me? Tell me straight out. What is it? Tell me. Well, tell me. Stop it, Andrusha. Let's talk tomorrow. What an agonizing night! Oh, don't excite yourself, Olya. I'm asking you quite calmly. What is it that you have against me? Tell me straight out. Ram, tum, tum. Tra, ta, ta, ta. Good night, Olga. God bless you. Masha. But Masha. Good night, Andre. You better leave them now. They are tired out, and you can go into these things tomorrow. Masha, dear. Yes, really, Andrusha. Let's talk tomorrow. I'm tired out, and it's time you were in bed. Olga. Oh,